Now, time for the very last uh, uh, talk. Please be patient, and if you can stay in the room, that would be appreciated. This is a talk um, titled Corporate Editing uh, and its Impact on Network Navigability within OpenStreetMap from three authors from Canada, Corey Dickinson, uh, Jugal Patel, and Dipto Sarkar. And this is about corporate editing that I think is a very, Hi there, very Dickinson. interesting topic. Hi there, I'm Corey Dickinson. I'm presenting on research I performed with my colleagues Jugal Patel and Dipto Sarkar. We looked at corporate editing and its impact on network navigability within OS. So a little background before I get into it. Uh, we looked at the overlap of two trends, looking at navigability as a metric within OSM and at corporate editing within OSM. Navigability is a very interesting metric because it can be measured intrinsically. All you need is routing models and looking at how suitable a network is for, for being used in navigation. A uh, network is only as good as its real world application. And OSM is of course no different. Um, it's really important that a network be able to be used by GPSs or autonomous vehicles, things like that. And um, looking at navigability really helps us measure that. Corporate editing is a relatively new phenomenon within OSM. Our colleague, Dr. Sarkar, first uh, got us interested in this. But since 2015 or 2016, paid teams of editors have become a big feature within the OSM landscape. Uh, these are working for big companies like Facebook, Microsoft, Apple, et cetera, et cetera. And they're mapping for a lot of different reasons. Uh, there was some controversy among some people within the community at various points about this, but um, now it's become a very complex phenomenon that has uh, become a really integral part of the OSM landscape at this point. But it's, it's a really interesting thing to research because it's sort of at the forefront. So uh, just to summarize, our research question is how has corporate editing affected navigability of the network? So we wanted to look at areas where there's corporate editing and see if navigation has been affected there. Um, our workflow is fairly complicated, but just to put it in the simplest way possible, we had a six different regions, um, some with high rates of corporate editing and a control region, Denmark, where there's a historical strong volunteer OSM community that provides strong data. So by comparing these two, we wanted to look if the navigability rate um, or the navigability of the network as a whole is different in these different locations, especially as corporate editing becomes more of a phenomenon during the time span we are looking at. We looked at three different ways of measuring uh, how suitable a network is for navigation. First of all, we looked at attributes that are needed for navigation. Again, for real world navigation, you need certain attributes of a segment to be used, things like name, max speed, turn restrictions, et cetera, et cetera. After a similar paper, we operationalized this by looking at name and map. We also looked at origin destination matrices efficiency ratios. An origin destination matrix is a, a matrix spread out over a network. It calculates the in-network cost uh, between point A and point B of the matrix. Uh, by looking at the ratio between the uh, Euclidean distance between those points and the in-network navigated distance, you can calculate how efficient it is. And the change of that over time indicates that the network is becoming more robust, more navigable, more uh, of, of higher quality. So a change in this is a measurement of increased efficiency and increased navigability. Lastly, we looked at topological islands, which are islands of a network that are not interconnected in with the rest of the network. Uh, obviously, this means that you cannot navigate into these sections. We did look um, at different types of topological islands. We found that a lot of them were pedestrian, but some of them aren't. Some of them are cul-de-sacs, um, driveways, parking lots, and these are obviously actually a part of the real world navigation network. So it's really important to understand topological island patterns to understand navigability. Uh, in terms of our results, we found something fairly unsurprising as a common saying in OSM, quality increases over time. And we found that navigability is increasing over time across all, pretty much everywhere we look, right? Um, across all of our metrics, all of our measurements, things are increasing. So the interesting thing here is not that finding, it's that there is a difference, a statistically significant difference between the pattern in Denmark, our control region with relatively little corporate editing and in our other areas. Um, the other areas show a lot of volatility where corporate editing is happening, the rate of increase of um, quality of navigability metrics is happening faster than in Denmark. They're a lot more volatile, um, things get edited faster, there's more segment happening, the ODM uh, ratios are becoming more efficient. Uh, you see the same trend in topological islands. Denmark is very flat, there's very few topological islands, but over time, um, the other ones reduce the number of topological islands, meaning they're becoming more navigable. Same thing in segment length. The segment lengths are getting shorter in the other ones, whereas Denmark's are fairly stable, indicating that the network is 
remaining uh, pretty much the same. So what's our takeaway from all of this? Um, again, unsurprisingly, the quality of the network is improving. It's becoming more navigable. But uh, interestingly, in corporate areas, this is happening faster. The presence of corporate editing in certain regions seems to correlate, at least, with uh, them becoming more navigable at a faster rate than in Denmark. Um, they're not necessarily more navigable places than Denmark. Denmark's network is already very robust, but we did find that they're changing faster than Denmark is, um, which is an interesting finding. Why? Well, that's really the interesting question. The question is who's in the driver's seat here? And that, that actually is something that we can only speculate at, but we can't really get into. So that gets into the motivations of corporate actors, but a lot of these companies are very involved in things like autonomous vehicles, um, GPS routing, uh, rideshare apps, delivery apps, things like that. And in order to do that, you need a very robust real world network. So the motivation of these companies is to improve navigation. One thing we would like to understand is if this improved navigability is coming at a cost of other things, if non-corporate editors are more focused on different types of mapping that wouldn't, that would be less focused on navigability, more focused on other attributes of the map. Uh, one thing to keep in mind again is that corporate editors are not monolithic. They're different sized teams, different payment structures, all sorts of different things. Many corporate actors are very involved in the community in other ways. So there's a lot of blending back and forth between whether or not someone is a corporate contributor or not. So it's very hard to generalize about this and we can only really speculate. At this. But this speculation, of course, leads into future research ideas. Uh, we are also working on looking at uh, a large meta-analysis of navigability metrics. As I said, we have found that there is a statistical significance between um, our control group and the others in terms of these metrics. Uh, we have looked at correlation patterns. You can see a sample of one here. Things like different types of editing groups and their demographics. Uh, we're also interested in moving away from this regional binning because this is just a preliminary study and looking at segments, the trends and segments that exist for all years, uh, those segments that have been edited by corporate editors, obviously we can measure certain attributes about them and compare them with segments that haven't been uh, measured and do very large scale uh, examinations of trends in the data. So we think there's a lot of really interesting next steps we're hoping to explore. Thanks for your time and listening to our talk. Um, I just want to say that I'm sure it was very brief and there are perhaps things I may have glossed over or misrepresented. So please feel free to reach out with any questions or clarifications. Thanks so much for your time.